Right, guys, I think we are live. Just before I get started, can, can you guys just leave a, a yes in the comments just to just so I know that you can see and hear me and see my screen? Great. Hi, Tony. Hi, Emily. Cool. I will take that as a yes. Okay, guys, thank you uh, for joining me today. Uh, this is going to be a session I want to do kind of every week, and it's kind of just to help sort of financial advisors really assess kind of uh, if Facebook ads is right for them before they kind of commit and jump in, whether they they do it themselves, whether they hire us another agency, or whether it's just seeing if it actually works. And I just want to kind of walk you through the process today in terms of how we do it uh, and how we've done it successfully for kind of financial advisors and other niches sort of across the world for the last three years. So I'm Hitesh. I'm the founder of a, a Facebook ads agency called Altitude Digital. We're based in York in the UK, up north. Uh, and as mentioned, we've been doing sort of Facebook ads for, well, I've been doing Facebook ads personally for around sort of seven years. And we're into the third year of our agency. 80% uh, of our clients come in the financial services space. and uh, that's just an example sort of results we've been able to generate through Facebook ads once, once the process is working. And as you may notice, that is a picture of me and I'm a big Liverpool fan, whether that impacts uh, anyone's thoughts on me and to work with me, uh, I'll let you be the judge of that today. As mentioned, we work mainly in the financial services space, so everything from sort of life insurance, pensions, retirement planning, or funeral plans, <clears throat> you name it, we've done in some shape or form. Uh, and we were very aware of the niche, the, the challenges in regards to compliance, what we can and can't say, uh, and, and kind of uh, how to go about it, really. So although I'm not a financial advisor, I don't claim to be, because I've worked with a lot of people in this profession now, I know enough on how to get the most out of the campaigns to, to ensure sort of a, a successful result as well, which kind of what stands my agency apart from uh, someone else doing Facebook ads. Uh, and, and I guess it's also down to specializing in this niche, we've been able to uh, really get the best for our clients. So what will we be covering today? So <clears throat> I think the first point is why financial advisors should take control of their marketing. That's the biggest thing. Uh, how to generate leads from Facebook ads. So I'll walk through the process that we follow. Uh, how much you need to spend on Facebook ads to get the best results. And it isn't as much as you, you think. <clears throat> I'll just cover what we do as an agency, just in case if someone wants to kind of discuss further and maybe take the next step. And I'll also host a live Q&A at the end. So if you could uh, drop your questions in the, in the sort of the question, the Q&A part of Zoom, I'll try and do my best to get through them during the call, but I will answer all of them towards the end as well. So why financial advisors need to take control? So I know the industry is heavily reliant on sort of uh, relying on word of mouth and referrals. And for me personally, uh, this type of sort of traffic source or lead generation source isn't controllable. Because I guess you could only ask your friends and family or so many times if they want to review their policy or even if they know someone needs help. Then if you're, if you're running a lifestyle business, that's fine. And that's fair enough because I know financial advisors can make a good living off that. But if you really want to grow your agency, you're going to have to uh, take control of your marketing and really understand how and where your leads are going to come from. Buying leads in can work and it, it's heavily driven in this space, but it, it can be costly and, and not as effective uh, purely because uh, you're buying in leads that have been generated through a third party brand. So therefore your firm isn't going to be at the top of mind. So there's no congruency when it comes to actually uh, conversion. So you're having to do the hard sell. So learning to do your own lead generation and get yourself out there is, is very important. As mentioned, yeah, promoting your brand is important, but not just to get your name out there, but to build trust in financial services when you're dealing with people's money, as you guys know, Building trust and rapport is really important. And so it's therefore important to be seen as the first touch point as well. As we live in an age now where digital is becoming more and more common, and even with the 
coronavirus and lockdowns, uh, we're at a point now where we are having to do business online. And being able to build that trust online is just as important if you can't meet that someone in person as you normally used to. But on the other side, if you're normally used to doing business locally, in theory, you've got a wider audience now if you can transact online or at least start the relationship online as well and eventually meet up with them if it makes sense to do so. <clears throat> I think it's also uh, just an observation as well because a lot of leads or, or even referrals have come through to financial advisors, they're already very warm. And because they've come through a recommended source, you don't really have to sell as much. So I, I think it's important to take the opportunity to of improve your sales skills not not to hard sell but always to to go through a value-led approach and it's always in my opinion to uh, generate leads by adding value solving problems rather than forcing a pension review or a life insurance review down someone's throat to a cold audience because for me it doesn't work and typically once you've worked with a financial advisor they normally stay with you for life assisting you through all, through all walks of life really as well so for me, the value-based approach is something I'm very big on. I don't believe in fear-based selling. Sometimes it's you may need to make reference to it, and even with the coronavirus, we, we can't avoid it. But I think it's uh, it's something just to try and get the balance right as well. And the value-led approach is something you'll see me kind of go through the, the my group, the courses, and even how we work as an agency as well. <clears throat> okay, so. The key lead generation strategy to making Facebook ads work, in my opinion, is that people don't go on Facebook to buy, they go on there to socialize. So if you put out an advert for a product and you haven't really given any thought into who they are, what their problems are, what they're interested in, they're going to switch off. They're, they're literally going there to socialize, see what their friends are doing, maybe stalk someone they fancy, etc. They go there literally to... Uh, just chill out and just and just see what the network is going up to. So if you're going to want to grab their attention, you're going to have to basically think of something which is going to grab their interest. And you're going to have to think of a, an irresistible hook or offer that solves a problem of your target audience uh, that they're going to find attractive and also relevant to start a conversation with. So Facebook in particular, any other social network is a very emotive platform. Um, a good example is let's say you're wanting to say offer a pension review what you could do is target people that play golf and say you're most likely going to uh, play golf when you retire your pension is going to pay for it when's the last time you had a review so you can see that i'm using an interest to to actually uh to, to get the, to gather attention which is important and i think the reason why we've made facebook ads sort of work successfully is because we've uh, we've gone a bit deeper to really understand how uh, that the customer and really use those sort of deeper interest to, to get the best out of their audience because a lot of people in my space and my competitors are not thinking as deep as this because they, they it's too much work they, they don't want to to really focus on a certain niche or even a sub niche as well so maybe think about your current customers and and what they like doing and then really even ask them and it'll give you some ideas in terms of how you can build a rapport uh, or even start a conversation as well so I'm a big Liverpool fan if you were to try and talk to me about football in Liverpool or, or even make an absurd comment that we're not going to win the league this year it's going to grab my attention and but it's going to be a conversation starter so providing you don't piss people off I think it's uh, it, it's always a good way to to, to build rapport so before you start, you need to really understand your customer. So the demographics, everything from the sort of age, location, it can even be ethnic background to an extent, uh, what, they, what they do as a living, uh, their pain points. So what are they going through that uh, during their moment in life? So sometimes using a pain point is a great way to start a conversation because people could then relate to it. Uh, what are their interesting desires? Uh, I know sort of, as we talked about golf, but we could even talk about sort of what do people want out of their life? And I know that sounds quite deep, but if you go around the pay point, you could sometimes a lot of people sell protection based on fear. Uh, but you could all also talk about securing someone's financial future. 
and maybe not having to worry about money. So you've got to really try and th think about your ideal customer and how you could link either their pain points, interests and desires onto, onto the product or service you're trying to, to kind of sell to them. So as I mentioned, that link is very important. So remember people who are on Facebook, they're, we don't know if they need help with life insurance, any other financial product or service. So what we're gonna to have to do really is make them either problem aware or even opportunity aware as well. So you're really gonna to have to grab their attention in that sort of way. So as mentioned <clears throat> over the last sort of slide or two is the, the key is to, to really go deep and, and find out what they're interested in. I've, uh, I've worked with some brands and some clients where they've even sort of targeted sort of football clubs or even football fans. And I'm sure over Facebook, the, there's a saturation for life insurance at the moment and they're, they're trying all sorts, whether it's for families, uh, whether it's for doctors, you name it, they're all trying different ways and they're all working because they are calling out a certain individual as well. I mean, I wouldn't worry about the audience size. It's all about can you get engagement and get a, get a way to start a conversation as well. <clears throat> so once you kind of have this information, you've, you've got uh, some core components to start generating leads on Facebook and actually from any, any sort of platform. Uh, so whenever you do any sort of marketing, it's really important to understand who you're targeting, uh, what they're interested in or what their pain points are to really leverage that to, to, to get them to provide their details and to really take the next step. <clears throat> so, but knowing that isn't as easy as just putting an advert on Facebook and you start generating leads. Facebook have made it incredibly easy to create an advert. I'm not gonna lie to you, creating an advert can literally take 10 minutes. Uh, but getting it to work effectively will take time and testing. And I think you need to have that sort of test and learn approach to finding a formula that works. Now, because our agency has been doing this now for a few years, we've found a methodology, if you like, that allows us to step through kind of from scratch, even from a firm that doesn't have a Facebook page or any presence online, uh, even, even, not, even not having a website in some cases, to generating leads sort of within sort of 30 to 90 days, which is a realistic sort of uh, timeline to, to generate leads at a low cost as well. So <clears throat> it can take a good one to three months to get this right. Sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. And I really want to emphasize that point because it's important to align expectations when you're trying. Sometimes people have just put an advert out there and, and blame that Facebook doesn't work. And, and it's, they haven't really given it enough, enough of a go or they haven't invested enough money to, to really make it work. I wouldn't be in business in this niche if Facebook has didn't work for my clients. So everything I'm going to go through over the next few slides is something we're practicing daily uh, and is delivering really good results. <clears throat> so our approach for Facebook ads, we've got a methodical way of finding a winning campaign. The first month we, we say is dedicated to testing and there are three things that we actually want to test in month one. So the first one is testing different audiences. So once you've identified your target audiences and it could be one audience or it could be a number of audiences, we, there are different ways on Facebook that you can target them. So you can use different interest targeting, location-based targeting, you could even upload your existing customer list and tell Facebook to find similar people, which in theory is gold dust because Facebook knows a lot more information about us and through targeting than we could actually find out. So getting their algorithm to, to do the heavy lifting is, is certainly worth doing. <clears throat> Next, we want to test a number of different headlines and this will be hook or an offer. So it could be uh, get a free notification review, download our free guide, sign up to free training. This is what's gonna <clears throat> basically stand out and make uh, someone convert. If you have an attractive hooker offer, it can be the difference between a really sort of successful campaign and, and even down to the cost per acquisition as well. And the next thing is we want to then test creatives and add copy. So creatives could be anything from sort of videos and, uh, and images. I know 
a lot of financial advisors aren't comfortable going on video. And I, to be fair, I, I was never comfortable going on video, but I think if it's a skill you can learn, and even if it's talking behind a, a PowerPoint presentation, it's it's going to improve conversion rates massively. And uh, they're very easy to do. And you don't need a professional studio. Sometimes if they look too corporate and polished, people switch off. But if you have got an iPhone or a smartphone, you can create professional looking videos. And, and especially if you're a single advisor in your own firm, it is going to build trust and rapport very quickly because people can see who you are and what you're dealing with. Dealing with. You're not just another Facebook ads campaign or another company trying to take their information and, and pass it on. <clears throat> so the aim for the first month is to determine lead quality uh, as well as the cost per lead. For me, quality is the first important factor as well as the conversion rate because you need to get that right first because we can then figure out are we getting the right people into the funnel? Are they, do they have the correct pension pot size or, or do they fit the right criteria for life insurance? Once we know what the lead quality is and what they convert at, we can then see where it fits in terms of a cost per lead and, uh, and how many leads we can get for our money. So the cost per lead is important, but I think it's more important that we get the right person into your funnel. At the end of the day, if, if I said to you, you'll pay £100 to get a, a customer worth £1,000 or even £10,000, you'll do it all day long. So you've got to really strive to get the best quality, best quality lead as possible. And I think through this testing process, you can do that because you're going to be able to see kind of which audiences work the best, which hooks and offers work the best, and same with sort of your creators and ad copy as well. So lead quality for me is number one. Generating leads on Facebook is easy. I'm not going to lie to you. It, it can be done very quickly. We've been able to generate leads from a campaign within a few hours from a campaign going live. but the, the quality thing can take a lot of time to refine and test and learn. And, and for me, it's when we work with, uh, with our clients, I'm more interested in the, the leads and the lead quality and, and even the contact rate, because that for me is the baseline to, to measure success from. <clears throat> Month two. So once you've kind of identified if the lead quality is where it needs to be uh, and the cost per lead is stable, you can effectively look to optimize further. So can we actually reduce that cost per lead by testing creators further? Could we test landing pages out? As in the first month, we very much stick onto Facebook. It's by staying on Facebook, it's always gonna give you a cheaper conversion. Uh, if you, as soon as you go away from Facebook, they will uh, they'll charge you a premium for it as well. So it's really understanding the lead quality. I, when it comes to sort of funnels and I'm sure you may have some questions at the end. I try and create the shortest possible funnel to acquire a customer. Uh, because if you create big sales funnels and there's loads of things out there, uh, it's going to be very hard to optimize and test because if you can't get people past the first point, the other, the other steps in your funnel are pointless and redundant because you're not going to get enough traffic through. So it's always important to, to start with the shortest possible funnel. And it's kind of something we... Uh, we do and really look at every touch point to see how we can improve it further. And if for whatever reason in the first one, we haven't found a winning approach, we keep testing. We, we either look at the audiences or the, the hooker off of the creative and, and we even extend it out if it is landing pages or if we need to find other ways of doing it, whether it's quizzes. So there are ways to look at the, the, the metrics within Facebook ads to see if a campaign is going to succeed or not, even before you get to this point. Nine out of 10 times, uh, we've generated between five and 15 leads in month one. So very rarely have we not generated any leads. The only time we may have not done it is if the audience or if there's uh, a very niche product, which is a bit harder to sell. And it, it can be sometimes the case where you're looking at business to business. Okay, and then month three, it's all about repeating the process. So once you've found a campaign that works and you wanna go from 10 pounds a day and increase the volume, sometimes just by chucking more money at Facebook isn't gonna give you more leads. Facebook will spend your money regardless. They're very good at doing that actually. So there are certain methods to scale a campaign safely. Uh, but I think the thing I recommend doing is actually 
trying different campaigns and finding different ways to generate leads because the bad thing about Facebook is that campaigns can't stop working tomorrow. And that's the frustrating thing. So you've got to be on your toes. You've got to check it daily. You've just got to think of loads of other ways to, to generate leads. We spend a lot of money internally to find other ways of getting sort of financial advisors into the world or even generating leads for our clients because you have to stay one step ahead. You don't know how long an advert is going to last. I've seen adverts last as short as a few weeks. <clears throat> and I've had some adverts last as maybe uh, 12 to 18 months. So there are a number of factors at play and, and also what your competition is doing too. So how much do you need to spend? So we've, we found through our testing, you can actually spend as low as sort of 10 pounds per day. Uh, or $15 per day uh, on Facebook ads. So I recommend sort of 300 pounds a month to do testing. And that's more than enough to, to kind of go through the process as well. Obviously, if you can spend more, you're going to test faster. But as mentioned, Facebook will spend your money. So I'd always recommend uh, starting minimum 10 pounds per day and, and make sure you give every sort of ad three or four days to, to get it working. Uh, you, you can test a few options as well. So with 10 pounds per day, Per campaign, you could test maybe three or four different audiences, and within each audience, you can test three or four different ads as well. And through the testing process, uh, which kind of we've gone through, it allows you just to gradually look at uh, how to do it as well. So once this process is in place, <clears throat> you literally can only spend 10, 10 to fifteen minutes per day looking at the data and seeing what you need to do next. And once you know the method, whether it's a uh, you decide to take our course or hire us it's kind of the same approach and and really it's just about getting good at the data to know if you're on the right track but you want to give sort of uh, any Facebook ad test three to four days now Facebook will always deliver you deliver you the best results within the first 24 hours and then they'll stabilize uh, that's because it's trying to put your advert in front of the, the best people that's likely to convert based on your campaign objective uh, I always think that if you give it three to four days and if it doesn't work, so it's reached a thousand impressions, maybe pause it and duplicate it and, and try and try something else. Uh, because if you stop and start ads or make changes to adverts mid-flight, the algorithm is going to get messed up and Facebook is never really going to learn uh, in terms of what, what, what looks good uh, from a campaign point of view as well. Once you've found a winning approach, the campaigns can be scaled. And when I say a winning approach, again, it's down to lead quality, sales and conversion. And your cost per lead will always go up and down, but as long as, as, long as overall it averages out, it's fine. And what I mean by that is you may get, let's say you may get two leads a day on average, but then on the weekend you may get 10 leads a day, and then on Monday you may get zero. Overall, the cost per lead will balance out. And as long as you maintain that, uh, and you know what your conversion rates are, and you know what the lifetime value of your customer is, you can't go wrong. The business that can afford to spend the most to acquire a customer will beat all their customers all day long. So don't worry about spending a bit more if you're going to acquire customers. There is too much fixation on getting cheap leads, but cheap leads doesn't necessarily mean better quality. Uh, and although getting cheap leads is 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 ideally the best when you start out because you can assess it. Sometimes it's not always uh, going to give you an indicator of success. So don't be fooled by the cost per lead. I'll always look at the quality, the contact rate, and, and if you're on the right track with your, with your copy. <clears throat> and then once you've stabilized the cost per lead, uh, the 10 pound cost per lead should give you around 30 leads per month. And it is simple as that. And if you work on a on a 10% conversion rate, you're looking at sort of three clients and that, that should more than pay for your, for your ad spend. The recommendation, the, uh, the, time of the, the recommendations of the process we put in place is that a client or the customer should be able to get one to two sales in a month and that should cover their costs and, and some more depending on obviously the model you go down as well. And Facebook, from experience across financial services, the typical sales conversion rate is between 10 and 30%. I've seen a bit lower and a bit higher, but again, it does depend on sort of the average order value as well. So uh, Facebook is always going to be a bit lower compared to Google because people go on Google to look for something when they, when they know they need it. So Facebook 
the conversion rates are lower, but your cost per acquisition should be lower too. But if you can make Facebook ads work and actually put out an advert in front of a cold audience, it's going to basically, and you get them to convert, it, it's a gold mine because you've taken someone from they're not necessarily looking for, for anything and you've turned them into a lead and even a customer. So as mentioned, it's important to focus on lead quality and, and the sales conversion rate. Cool. <clears throat> so that's the process. I just want to spend a few minutes or not even a minute just to go through kind of what we do. So we work with a lot of financial services firms globally and other marketing agencies. Uh, and we've got a course for those that want to learn and be a bit more hands-on. Uh, we've got uh, our main agency is actually people outsource their marketing campaigns to us. So effectively we do all the heavy lifting. Uh, all we ask is our clients just call the leads as soon as they can and provide us feedback. Uh, we also offer paper lead in some niches too uh, and consultancy as well. So I'm not going to pitch to you today. If you want to check out our website, uh, the link is there. And I'm sure you know where to find me on Facebook if you have any other questions as well. Cool. So thank you for uh, listening in the last 20 minutes. I appreciate I may have gone through a lot. I just wanted to give you an indication on what to expect from Facebook ads. And if you have any questions, please uh, drop them in the, the Q&A or the chat below now. And I'll more than happily uh, answer them. Anthony, yes, we do uh, We do Google Ads as well. I mean, our course is focused mainly on Facebook ads, but uh, with, apologies, my three-year-old screaming in the background. Uh, we do Google as well. What we find with Google is that it's very expensive. Uh, and even the display network, it takes a lot of refining and testing. So I try and recommend starting with Facebook if you can, just to get a working funnel, and then move on to Google and other platforms. Uh, does that answer your question? Perfect. Cool. Does anyone have any other questions or concerns or uh, reservations? Hi, Simon. Do you design actual advert? Yes, Simon, we do. So every sort of uh, client we work with, we don't copy and paste adverts between clients. One, it's never going to work because you compete against yourself. And two, we want to make sure that we actually get your company and firm across in the right way. Every financial advisor I've spoken to has got a different way of selling and, and their view of the world and, and they've got different niches they serve as well. <clears throat> so we do everything from writing the copy, creating the images, the videos to an extent. All we ask for is your input uh, and if we need to get compliance sign off as well. Does that answer your question, Simon? Great, thank you. Cool, is there any other questions, guys, while you're here? So Anthony, presuming a lead buyer's process follow-up is key, do you ask about this? So when we work with our clients, whether we're teaching them or whether it's on a retainer basis, and it's funny actually we have with Rob and Emily who are my uh, kind of my sales team is you have to educate your client or even yourself to make sure you follow the leads and it really depends on the type of campaign if you are setting the expectation that someone's going to call them uh, then call them if you're going to offer a guide and they also take their phone number call them in a few days but the lead is always going to be hottest when they're they're called or contacted within the first 15 minutes or 20 minutes <clears throat> and obviously the follow-up process is key one thing we found with different uh, financial services is that life insurance is always a numbers game the sooner you can call someone while they're in that frame of mind the higher the conversion uh, pensions giving away a free guide or some training works really well and it's more of a nurture process but the sooner you can build that rapport and get your get your brand across and especially if you're doing video uh, can really build that trust so follow-up process is key uh, i mean on average 
I've seen some clients been able to get through to a lead within two to three days. Uh, but then sometimes if you continue to work the leads, they can be resurrected or they can come to surface kind of later on. The biggest bugbear I have in this niche is that is people may get the lead, they <clears throat> may give it a few days and give up, whereas actually you should keep trying that lead even for a few weeks. And sometimes the uh, the there may be more of an interest. So you've got to keep trying and, and give it a good go. Sometimes the conversion rates haven't been there because the sales process is poor. I hope that answered the question, Anthony. I'll just move on to your second one. Lead buy could say the lead quality is poor when in fact they may not be slow to follow up I haven't called the lead more than once or twice. Do you find this situation that a buyer will terminate? Yes, I've seen that before. It's very hard to blame a client or someone for their sales process. All we can do really is vet them out and really encourage them to do it and, and be transparent. So we'll deliver leads to all our clients in a spreadsheet and ask them to give us feedback and really do it. Unfortunately, as a lead provider, uh, we'll always get blamed. Uh, and all we can do really is educate our clients and, and really just help them, give them the tools and the processes and the information to follow up. And uh, we don't just do Facebook ads, we do email marketing, we do SMS marketing, we do retargeting. So anything we can do to really keep the lead top of mind and warm, it's the best we can do. And for every client is different. I've got some of my big clients are calling leads 20 times in one week and their conversion rates are astounding. Whereas I've got some clients where they're so not used to calling leads or having to follow up, it's just a bit hard to do, which I get. So I think you've got to, someone's expressed an interest in your product or service. You've got to assume that they're just busy and they haven't said no. So you've got to keep calling them. And it's an education process, Anthony, in my experience. And it's something that we, if I'm honest with you, we need to get better as an agency to educate. One thing we are doing is that is if someone has got a poor attitude to sales and expect the lead to be a done deal, uh, I won't work with them. I'd rather just walk away and not take their money. Do you sell leads exclusively to a client or do you keep the old leads and your responder? So from a cost per lead point of view, we'll sell the leads exclusively. Yes, we don't uh, sell the leads on the always unique as well. Uh, and sometimes we may pitch different offers up 80% of our business is retainer based and cost per lead stuff. We are always trying to see if we could actually uh, generate leads and, and see why it's on there because uh, it, it's actually quite lucrative for us as well. I think also just to add from a GDPR point of view, we can't sell leads onto multiple people and also it's unfair because uh, you're not going to, at the end of the day, I want my customers to be able to convert into sales so if i'm selling the same lead onto 10 people it's it's never going to work and it's just going to be cause more hassle which i know a lot of lead providers do and they shouldn't be cool i'm just going to go uh nahendra which would be better facebook ads video or images so test both nahendra actually uh we found that Images can work, even stock images from the Facebook library work really well. And videos are always good because videos actually drive down the cost of your conversion. So I'd test both. Uh, tips for insurance Facebook ads. So I think not just insurance ads, but any campaign, I'd always focus on your target audience, but focus on why they want life insurance. People don't want life insurance. What they want is to protect their family, uh, make sure they've got peace of mind, make sure they've got one less thing to worry about, whether it's funeral costs or any debts to pay. So focus on the outcome that your product or service will deliver. So and that isn't just for insurance, it's any type of uh, sort of campaign or product or service that you want to promote. Hope that made sense. Anthony, so let's have a look. You incorporate social trees into referrals. Yes, we do. So some some cases we have quizzes uh, where we want to uh, try and qualify them further. It really just depends on the campaign and the level, the amount of information we've asked for as well. So sometimes we just need to ask for the amount of cover they need for them and that's sufficient. <clears throat> sometimes we may need to qualify people a bit further as well. And, and even using advertorial is a good way to do it. Yeah, exactly. So you can, so by using a decision tree, you can sell leads based on what it is. If you are just, say, selling web leads or 
uh, when we do the paper lead model, uh, our sales team actually calls the leads up to qualify them and sells them on as well. So and they're obviously going to be a bit more expensive. So yeah, decision tree is quite good. And if you're doing this for the long game, having a lead in your world a bit longer before you either contact them or pass them on if you know their agency uh, is really well. It, you've just got to look at the numbers and, and justify it. I think the, the quality lead is always going to be better in the long run. Hope that answers your questions, Anthony. Great. Does anyone else have any more questions, guys? No, I mean, uh, if you guys could leave a comment, was this uh, training session useful today? It's something I'm going to be running every week, but I'm always keen to improve and uh, I really see if uh, how we can make it better. Because I know a lot of people got reservations, a lot of people on the fence with marketing and investing in marketing. and and that isn't necessarily just with us. So if you haven't got any questions today, please use the group and why don't we jump on the call every week? It's it's something I'm committed to doing now. Uh, so if there are no many questions, uh, thanks for your time today, guys. And uh, I'll speak to you soon.